Hello, my name is Ashish Patia and I'm a specialist solution architect at AWS. My primary focus area is application modernization and focus on Microsoft technologies such as .NET, containers, and SQL Server. So let's talk about the agenda for today's conversation. Uh, we're going to start off as why we should look at event-driven architecture. Here we are going to start off with talking about uh, the challenges with tight coupling of microservices. Then we are going to talk about with what services we can solve those challenges. This is the section where we're going to talk about AWS services, specifically SQS, which is Simple Queuing Service, and SNS, Simple Notification Service. And in the last part, we are going to take a look at hands-on demo. Now, microservices typically start simple. So in this example, we have got two services, order service and invoice service. It is a standard synchronous API based service. Now in this case, when a client makes a call to the order service, the order service turns around, makes a call to the invoice service, uh, gets an invoice number as a response and responds back to the client with that order number. Now this works great when we have a simpler system like this. Now, what happens when you start adding more services that integrate with the order service? So on this slide, uh, let's say we have added enhance our system architecture and we have two new, two new services, uh, fulfillment and forecasting. Now this architecture poses multiple challenges. Firstly, there is a tight coupling between producer and consumer. So a producer in this scenario is an order service that is creating a message and the consumer is the one that is receiving the message and taking further action on it. Secondly, it actually introduces multiple points of failure. So for example, if there was a bug or an error in the forecasting service, since order service is acting as an orchestrator, any, chal any errors in the forecasting service will cause the entire workflow to fail. Thirdly, we need to build some intelligence in terms of retry logic and error handling in the order service, such as uh, let's say there was an issue with the forecasting service and we did not get a successful response back in the first try. The order service needs to handle that error condition and subsequently do a retry logic based on the error. Now the retry logic could differ based on the quality of service and the architecture for each of these. And this will make the order service uh, additional complex besides the business logic to handle the retry for each of these downstream services. And finally, uh, with this tight coupling, it makes it difficult to evolve architecture. So let's say in the future, we decide to add a new service uh, that will require a change to an order service too, right? And if we decide to make any changes to any of these services, that will require a change to the order service since the interface is going to be changed too. So how do we solve the challenges that were outlined in the previous slide? One of the options is through PubSub or Event Router. Publisher subscriber pattern is a pattern in the software architecture where a publisher creates a message, sends it to a predetermined location, and the consumers can subscribe to the topics of interest and consume those messages. As you can see, this architecture breaks down the tight coupling between the order service and other services. Uh, in this scenario, the order services goes and publish an event when a new order is created. Any of the downstream services can subscribe to the topic and take subsequent action. Now this architecture provide, along with breaking down the tight coupling provides some additional benefits. For example, if we decide to evolve our business process and add a new service where we can send real time notification to the consumer when an order is created or to prevent credit card fraud, we integrate with the payment service. We can easily evolve that business process with this architecture. We do not need to go and make changes to the order service that is fronting out our e-commerce process, let's say as an example. I will also like to uh, quote here, if your application is cloud native or large scale or distributed, and it does not include a messaging or event component, that is probably a bug. So you need to keep in mind as you design these cloud native applications on AWS platform, 
and be aware of the messaging and the S, uh, notification components. So now let's talk about the AWS services that can help you solve these challenges. At a broad level, we have two categories, event store and event router. Think of event store as a buffer that can hold on to your events until the consumer is ready to use them. On the other hand, an event router is a program that can send messages and events between software application. So again, to clarify store versus router, now within the store, we have two subcategories. The first is a messaging queue, and this is where we have Amazon SQS service, simple queuing service, and on the open source side, we have Amazon MQ. On a stream, we actually have an AWS native service called Amazon Kinesis Data Stream. And on the open source, you can actually leverage uh, Amazon MSK to run Kafka in a managed offering. On the event router, we have Amazon SNS, which can provide you with a pub sub, and this is something we're gonna take a look at the demo too. In addition, we have Amazon Event Bridge, which can help you build event-driven application, integrating with other AWS services and other SaaS applications. Amazon Simple Queuing Service is a fully managed and serverless message queuing service. It creates a buffer between microservices and helps you build distributed systems. Uh, it scales dynamically based on the AWS infrastructure and the cost is based on the usage. And what that means is, uh, depending on the number of messages that you're pushing through the queuing, you'll get charged for that. This is a significant differentiator that I've seen. Uh, in, the, in my previous jobs, I was responsible for setting up enterprise service bus with likes of Tipco, Kafka, and MuleSoft. And I've seen it requires significant cost and effort commitment to stand up the environment and keeping it always on. The queuing uh, on SQS, uh, there you get two different types of queues. The first is standard, and the second one is first in, first out FIFO queues. Uh, again, the scaling is virtually unlimited throughput for standard queues. And you also have an option to exchange sensitive data uh, as you're building these distributed systems, uh, you can take advantage of other AWS platform services to encrypt and decrypt it. So now let's take uh, what an Amazon SQS architecture looks like. On the left-hand side, we have a producer. You can have multiple instances of producer. In this case, let's say multiple instances of auto service. In the middle, we have simple queuing service. Uh, there are three messages that are sitting on the queue right now, A, B, and C. And on the right, we actually have consumers. Uh, you can have n number of consumers. Let's say consumer one makes a call to the queuing service and says receive message. Once it gets a message, the message A is going to be marked as invisible. Consumer two comes along. It's going to make a call to a receive message. And in this scenario, it's going to get message B. Now let's say consumer one was able to successfully process the message. At that point, it's going to make, uh, it's going to invoke the API delete message and the message A is going to get removed from the queue. Now consumer two crash for some reason. In this scenario, the message B will become visible again and that will depend on the visibility window, which we're going to take a, a, a detailed look during a demo. What I'm trying to illustrate here is uh, the messages will not get lost until the consumer issues a delete message call. Now let's talk about some of the advanced SQS features. Uh, first is a dead letter queuing policy. As we know, uh, uh, things do go wrong. And in fact, uh, we should plan for things going wrong uh, as we're designing software architecture, uh, software applications. Now this is where dead letter queuing comes in the picture. If for some reason consumer A was not able to process a message, then instead of going and doing n number of retries, you can take advantage of dead letter queuing. Secondly, for enhanced throughput, you can look at batching where you can send and receive messages in batches. Uh, thirdly, you get the functionality of delayed messages. If you would like to delay the delivery or postpone the delivery of messages, you can take advantage of that too. In terms of encrypting, you can use customer managed key uh, within Amazon platform to encrypt and decrypt. You do have an option for setting the retention period, 
by default it is set to 14 days. In addition, you can set some attributes on the message. Uh, for example, when you're publishing a message, you will like to add an attribute and a consumer can interrogate the attribute as opposed to um, opening up the message and then taking further action on it. And finally, the SQS does integrate with other AWS platform servers, uh, in this case, CloudWatch, that is our logging platform. Amazon Simple Notification Service is a fully managed messaging service and provides functionality to implement PubSub, Publisher Subscriber Architecture. With this architecture, you can send a, send a single message to a large number of subscribers and the notifications are pushed to the subscriber. It does support both application to application and application to person. Some of the common uh, destination endpoints for application to application include uh, sending a message to SQS, uh, HTTP or a Lambda function. For application to person, you can send that message via email, SMS or mobile push. During the demo, we are going to take a look at how a single message getting published to SNS can be sent over to SQS, as well as uh, sending a, triggering an email to a consumer's inbox. So now let's see this in action. On the left hand side, I actually have got one too many producer. In the middle, we have an SNS topic. And on the right hand side, we have consumers. Let's say a producer goes and publish a message to an SNS topic. Going back to our earlier use case or example of order service, let's say when an order is created, an order event is published to an Amazon SNS topic. On the right, you can think of consumers as different services that we discussed earlier. Uh, it can be inventory forecasting. Now, each of these consumers can subscribe to the same topic and get notified when an event gets published. Now let's enhance the scenario. Let's say there is a service that is only interested in receiving orders that belong to a specific country. You can do that by using a message attribute where a consumer can go and filter and receive messages based on the matching, matching criteria of a message attribute. Uh, I have seen personally uh, some of the enter enterprise service bus that runs on premise that do not support this capability. And before that, we actually had to crack open the message, look inside the message, and then perform filtering, which is a very inefficient way of performing filtering. While in this scenario, we do not have to open the message structure up. Now, there are numerous patterns that uh, demonstrate uh, the usage of both SQS and SNS. Uh, I would like to showcase two examples. On the left-hand side, we actually have a client which can send a message to Amazon SQS. Again, for uh, sub robust error handling, we have dead letter queuing at the below. And we can actually have a Lambda function that is going and polling the SQS queue and writing those records to Dyn Dynamo database. Here, we actually have a publisher that is pushing a message to S Amazon SNS. And as you can see, uh, with this service, you can have a fan out architecture. Here, we actually have a single message getting published to an SQS queue. Lambda is pulling the queue and writing to the database. It can also get published to SQS queue, a second SQS queue where Lambda is pulling the message and then writing to another SNS topic. And then in the last, we actually have a step function where SNS is sending a message to Lambda function directly. And from there, you can actually have a workflow that is taking further action based on the message uh, details. All right, so let's jump to the demo now. Now, before we start the demo, uh, we need to make ensure a prerequisite, and that is to set up an AWS credential on the machine. And these credentials are going to be used to go and talk to AWS services. Uh, on this machine, I've already configured that, but let me show you where the, those needs to be defined. If you go under your user, you will see a folder called .aws. You will see a credential file. And once you open the file, you will see that we can actually define an access key ID and a secret access key. These combination of these two entries are being leveraged by SDK or command line interface to go and talk to AWS API services. 
you can have a different combination of access key and secret access key grouped under a profile. Uh, right now, it's actually grouped as a default profile here in this example. And you can actually have another profile called Ashish profile. This gives you the flexibility to modify the profile or credentials based on a name. Once you have done that, let's go and define an SQS queue in the Amazon console. Now for this demo, I already have a queue defined. It is a standard queue. This is where you see a type of standard. And the name of the queue is called .NET hyphen Austin SQS queue. As you can see here, the number of messages available and in flight are zero. So there's nothing in the queue at this point. Now for .NET application to go and talk to Amazon SQS, we need to import an SQS NuGet package. It is called AWS SDK.SQS. You can even go and check this package uh, from a NuGet packages library or server. And you can see this is the package that's been installed. Now for this demo, what we are going to show first is how easy it is to go and write a message. So this is a piece of code that's going to be executed that we are going to run to publish a message. As mentioned earlier, the first thing we need to do is to retrieve the AWS credentials. And this is how you can do it. There is a class uh, within Amazon Runtime called AWS Credentials. And you can actually call a method in the of credential profile store chain to retrieve the credentials. Once you have that, we need to instantiate the Amazon SQS client. This class is coming from the NuGet package. We specify the AWS credential and the region in which we actually want to interact with. Next item is to actually go and create the send message request. This is where we need to provide a queue URL. So this is the same URL, the URL of the queue that we defined earlier. Okay. And you can see right here. And then we need to provide a message body. In this scenario, we are actually taking the data, serializing into a JSON string. We are not adding any delay and we are going to go and publish a message to the queue. So let's run this and see this in action. So I'm just going to go through this. I already have Swagger configured, so it actually provides a nice interface for us to go and test this out. And here we are going to go and invoke this method. So let's change the summary to say .NET Austin demo. So we'll hit the breakpoint. And at this point, let's take a look at what the request looks like. If you take a look at the message body, it should contain uh, the summary as .NET Austin demo right here. And you can see this has been formatted into a well-defined JSON. So we would like to publish this to the queue. So let's hit continue. Let's go back to the console and let's see if the message actually got published. We can actually go and refresh it here. Right now it's actually showing me the messages in flight is one. Is one. Uh, and the reason being we have already read the message in the same process. And let me show you how we go about doing that. So if I come back here, I actually stop the debugger. If you go back here, we expect the messages available to be one. Okay. So as you can see, there's no one, uh, no consumer has read this message and the message is stored on the queue itself. At this point, we would like to see if, what does it take to go and read that message. So here is, an, um, here is a weather forecast processor that is running as a background service. Again, we need to provide a set of AWS credential to go and talk to the API. We specify uh, a receive message request. We need to specify a queue URL. And earlier during the presentation, we talked about the visibility timeout. Right now, I actually have set the visibility timeout to be 20 seconds. And what that means is once this processor goes and reads a message, no other consumer will be able to see the message for 20 seconds. After a 20 second period is elapsed, if this consumer does not go and delete a message, the message is going to reappear on the SQS queue. 
In this case, we are actually calling a receive message async to go and pull the message from the queue. It's going to pull up a batch of messages and for each of the message that we receive, we can go and process it. As you can see right here, as I'm reading a message, I'm also calling a delete message. So this is where we want to make sure once the message is processed, we delete the message from the queue to avoid duplicate processing. So let's run this now. So as you can let's see, I think I expect the message to pop up right here, right away. So you can see here, it was able to pull the message. It should contain the message uh, body of what we had defined earlier. And you can see in the summary, we have the .NET Austin demo. If we run this through, the message should be deleted from the SQS key queue and we should actually see both of them set to zero. Okay. Now let's take another example where we go and publish a message and we simulate an application crash. So here I'll actually go back to the post operation. We're going to say try it out. Now we're going to change the summary to say simulate. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually go and send the message out. This is going to publish a message and we expect the messages in flight to be set to one. Okay. Now we come back here and instead of going and deleting the message, uh, even though we have read the message, we are going to simulate that we didn't, we couldn't do anything with it or the application crashed. At this point, I will expect the messages available to be going back to one. Or since it's running as a background service, it reread the message. So we need to go and stop the debugger. And now if I go back here, I expect the messages available to be set to one. So you can see if for some reason the consumer crashed and it was not able to read the message, the message is going to stay on the queue and we are not going to lose any messages. Look at what does it take to send and receive messages to SNS. As mentioned earlier, Simple Notification Service uh, is a managed service at AWS and it actually helps you build a pop sub architecture. What we are going to show in the demo is once you publish a message from a .NET SDK, how can we send the, pub, send the same message out to multiple subscribers? The first thing that we need to do is to go to AWS console, click on Amazon SNS, and we need to define and create a topic. Now for this demo, I already have a topic defined. The topic name is called .NET hyphen Austin Day. So let's take a look at this. With it, once a message gets published to a topic, I've defined three different subscribers. Subscriber one is where I would like to send an email out. So earlier during the presentation, we talked about how we can enable application to consumer. Now this is an example on how we can send an email. The second is to trigger a Lambda function. So Lambda integration is kind of baked in with SNS. And thirdly, we can also integrate with SQS queue. So once a message actually gets published to SNS, we can pull that message, get it to SQS, and then take further action. Now, what does it take to send a message? I have another ASP.NET application. To keep it simple, I have aligned the architecture, and the interface are very similar in terms of pushing a message and uh, receiving a message. The first thing that we need to do is to retrieve the AWS set of AWS credentials. Again, we are going to use the default credentials to go and talk to AWS platform services. Once we have that, we are going to create an instance of Amazon Simple Notification Service Client. Now, as you can see, this, is a, this class is different when we had to interact with Amazon queuing service. We need to provide the credential and the region we want to interact with. The next step is to build a published request. Now this is where we need to define the topic ARN. ARN is an Amazon resource number that gets assigned when you create a topic. So if you come here back to the topic, you can see the ARN. And this is the ARN that we need to define in the .NET NuGet package or the code. 
The next test to serialize the message. Uh, here we are again JSON serialize, uh, serializing it. We need to sp specify a subject. Earlier we had talked about the message attributes and in terms of how you can use to do intelligent filtering and that's something also we're going to look at that too. So here we add the message attribute of month and then finally we go and publish that message out. So let me start the deep, this application again. It's going to bring up a Swagger UI that we can use to test this application. You can click on try it out, scroll down, and let's change the summary to make it something unique that we can recognize. So we'll say .NET SNS demo and click on execute. Once it gets here, we're going to use a client to go and publish the message out. Now, one of the challenges that I've seen, how do you validate that the message actually made to the SNS topic? Obviously, we did not get any exception, but since our mess, uh, some, one of the subscribers is Amazon SQS, so we can actually go back to the console, navigate to the SQS queue, and we expect the number of message count to be incremented. So let me go here. And let's go and publish another message. So right now, the number of messages available are 12. Come back here. Click on execute and we will expect the number of message count to be incremented to 13 at this point. So this is a validation that once a message actually gets published to the queue, it actually got triggered to an SQS queue. In addition, we can actually take a look at the matrix in the CloudWatch. Uh, I had mentioned earlier that uh, SNS and SQS are both integrated with other AWS platform services. Uh, CloudWatch is a logging platform. There is a pre-canned dashboard that you can leverage, which can tell you the number of notifications delivered, the number of messages published to, and you have an option to go and refresh and you will see the, re the number of message count is going to be incremented here. Okay. Now, once a message is there, what does it take to go and read a message? So since we are publishing a message to SQSQ, if I go back and restart the application, um, the one which actually goes and reads the message, second. So I'm going to go back to Amazon AWS SQS and we want to restart to see, can it read that message back? So as soon as the message service comes up, okay, and you can see it already actually read the message. And if we go and expand this, you can see the body actually has a topic ARN that actually tells us the message actually came from SNS. And here is a subject line that we added. And it's going to keep on reading those messages till actually goes and drains out. As you can know, uh, we actually had 13 messages sitting in the queue and that's what's going to drain. So now this wraps up our demo for both SQS and SNS. So real quick, what we showed today was why we should build event-driven architecture, which AWS services that you can leverage uh, both for uh, queuing as well as to implement PubSub, that is SNS and how you can leverage a .NET SDK to both send and receive messages, and how well these services integrate with other downstream services. Thank you everyone for joining in. I do appreciate you taking the time to listen in to the session. I hope you find it useful. If you have any further questions, here is an email uh, address of mine that you can reach out to.